applause for AJ, the animated illusionist. Come on. Yeah. AJ performs around the world. He's been to, gosh, Japan, China, Finland, all over Europe. He was in, um, in Vegas with the World's Greatest Magic Show for three years, number one family show, uh, three years in a row, $85 to get in. But he's going to have another program here tonight at 7 o'clock. And it's only $50. No, it's free. <laughs> 50, it's free tonight at 7 o'clock. And there's free pizza sponsored by some area churches. So tonight at 7 o'clock, um, grab a ticket on the way out. If you like what you saw, give it up nice and loud for AJ at the end of the year. Right now, I would walk up to you and say, in front of everybody, just stand up and share your most embarrassing moment. And she's like this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I won't make you. I'll share my favorite one. This one's from Santa Marie, California. Guy and girl were on their first day. They went to a movie. Teachers, don't worry, it was a good movie. Rated G, Bambi, part three. That's a good flick. Could you imagine if the creators and producers of Jason or Freddy would have created a horror film like Bambi? It'd be like this, Bambi, part three. Bambi kills Thumper. <laughs> so pick up movies that go along with your family and their values. They're sitting there, first date, sitting towards the back, kind of nervous. I don't know what it is about our anatomy, but we get nervous, we need to go to the restroom. And the guy was really nervous, he was like, excuse me, I need to go to the restroom. He was a real gentleman. By the way, the word gentleman seems to be disappearing in America today. The only time you see the word gentleman is on a restroom door. Oh, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of wimps in society that won't stand up for what they believe is right. But there's, <laughs> there's not a lot of, and there's a lot of macho guys who don't think it's okay to show or share like an emotion or a tear and embrace. But there's not a lot of gentle, compassionate, sensitive men who are gentle enough to be strong and yet strong enough to be gentle. And every time I see that, there's girls' eyes in the audience that are like, where is he? <laughs> But guys, he was a gentleman, be a gentleman, he was a gentleman, said excuse me, got up, went to the restroom, no problem, came back, sat down. But when he sat down, he realized his fly was open. He said, Bob, what do you do? You just can't zip your zipper up sitting in the theater seat. He said, I don't want to stand up and say excuse me for a minute. <laughs> he said, I know what I'll do. I'll ask her if she wants some pup or some soda. If she says yes, I'll just put my hand in my zipper, stand up, zip it up, walk away, no problem. You want some pumpkin or some soda? She says, sure. So he puts his hand on the zipper, stands up, zips it up, no problem, starts walking out all of a sudden. Ah! 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 The girl in front of him, her hair. <laughs> her hair was stuck in his zipper. He's like, ah, what can the guy do? Did you ever get something stuck in his zipper? Can't go, I'm sorry, here's your hair back. He's trying get it loose. What could the girl do? She could walk on like this. Let's go. <laughs> True story. The officer heard the commotion. The officer comes down the aisle with a flashlight. <laughs> the officer sees what's going on, turns on the lights, turns off the movie, and in front of a pack theater gets a pair of scissors and cuts her hair from his zipper. When it was done, the whole theater stood up and gave him a standing ovation. I can't imagine that embarrassment, but it really happened. And I, I collect these everywhere I go. Um, usually, well, in the past, what we used to do is we used to do just one assembly program in a day. But today, AJ already did K through six. And then tonight, we're going to be back here at what time? Seven. And there's free pizza. pizza. But when we used to do one, we used to train the peer facilitators, peer leaders. Here's why. 90% of students, if they're having a hard time in school or in life, Maybe because like mom and dad was split up or they're dealing with an eating disorder or self-harm or anxiety or depression. 90% turn to a friend first. So we train friends on how to help a friend and then where to, took, where to look for referrals and help. But to break the ice, we just have 10 people sitting in a circle and everybody will go around and share and we'll sit and laugh and have a good time. But afterwards, when the group is broken up, there's maybe just one person left, I'll say something like this. Now that everybody's gone, is there maybe another most embarrassing moment you didn't show with the whole group? 
And I'm a service even time, they're like, <laughs> I'm like, come on, tell it's gotta be good if you don't want anyone to know. And they're like, <laughs> I'm like, come on, I'll put it in my next book. And they're like, no, Bob. I'm like, why not? And almost every single time they'll say something like this. Because Bob, for me, it's not a most embarrassing moment. But I'm embarrassed with who I am as a person. At that time, there's a tear that comes on their face. And if not, if they hide their feelings and emotions and wear those masks, like sometimes you and I do, if you have the eyes have been trained through love to penetrate that mask and see the heart, there's usually still a tear that comes from the heart. And they start realizing how many people weren't living life to the fullest, how many people didn't even believe they had any dignity. And I thought, what makes a difference? What makes something a most embarrassing moment for one person? But for the next person, they're embarrassed about who they are as a person. I think I found the, the difference. It's the element of choice. See, almost all of us have a most embarrassing moment. Even if it's just walking down the hall and you trip and your books go flying. If you've ever done this, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> your books go flying, your hands come out to catch you. You hit the ground and the first thing you do is what? Look around and see if anybody saw you. <laughs> and if somebody saw you, just kind of go, <laughs> right? If you like a dork, you walk away. That's an embarrassing moment. But the same person trips, books go flying, your hands come up to catch you, you look around to see who saw, and then you look back. And you see a group of students staring and pointing and laughing. One person's leg is stuck out. And they did it intentionally, on purpose. Please hear me, when you use your choices to hurt, humiliate, make fun of, put down, harass, degrade, or bully another human being, people become embarrassed about who they are as a person. There's wrong philosophy in society that goes something like this. Want to feel good about yourself? Put somebody else down, make fun of them, make yourself look better. It doesn't work in the long run, but so many people use it. Even in my own school, our high school football team, we went four years in a row without losing the game until the final playoff game. And I started. Felt pretty good about that. But there's one guy on our team, he wasn't that good. His name was Jack. Still is. <laughs> Jack was real good at football. I'm not making fun of Jack. It's just not where his gifts or talents were. And teachers, I don't know how to say this politically crap, but in Wisconsin, in the big town I'm from, if you're a guy that had any size, you played football. And if not, you were labeled and called names. So he wanted to be a part of the team so bad that he came out early and he stayed late just to make the team. Well, he made the team because coach never cut anybody. But to think a starters made him feel accepted, I wish he could say yes. Instead, they laughed at him, they made fun of him, they used him as a blocking dummy. They had a lot of fun at his expense. One day after practice, I was in the middle of the field, and I was taking a drink of water. I'll demonstrate now. <laughs> I'll demonstrate one more time. <laughs> and somebody said, hey, Bob, look at Jack. So I looked, some of the other starters, <coughs> Some of the other starters had taken Jack and hung him by the fence post, by his jock strap. Okay, I wish you could see it. I wish you could see the three looks on their faces. Some of you guys automatically went, oh. <laughs> right? But then there, was, then there was some compassion. Teachers, you hear it, it was a, oh. <laughs> but then there was here, even good, small school in South Dakota. Great school, there's still a lot of you going like this. <laughs> You're like, I don't think I'm supposed to laugh, but I want to. To be honest, I'm ashamed to say it as a speaker, that's what I, I looked over. I saw his legs and his arms dangling from the fence. And they started laughing big time with the whole group. I hate to admit it, but I did. Until I had to walk by him to get into the locker room. So I was laughing with everybody else until I got close. And I looked up. And I saw how embarrassed he was, and I saw the tears coming down. I thought, you know what, Jack didn't deserve that. Jack never did anything to hurt our team. He would have done anything just to fit in, just to belong. You know what the uh, professionals tell me? That the number one reason for people to join gangs today is? For a sense of belonging. 
a sense of team, a sense of family. You know what I think is sad? Some gangs after initiation would have treated him better than our football team and our school treated him. But I shared that at school a few years ago and somebody said, Bob, you have to finish that story. I said, what do you mean? He said, you gotta talk about it, I helped him down. He became his friend. I said, I can't do that. He's like, why not? I said, because all of my stories are true. And even though I knew what they were doing was wrong, I hate to admit it, but I didn't help him. You know what I did? When I saw the tears, I turned my head the other way and I looked down and I walked by him. Just for the record, I think I was just as guilty as the people who put him up there. Why? Because I didn't tell him, anybody? I didn't help him? I was a quiet bystander? But why didn't they help him? Who did I say put him up there? Some of the other starters. starters. The guys I want to be able to see. <laughs> um, I, I know what kind of guy that I am. When I walk into the room, I know girls don't go, wow, look at that. <laughs> you see when I walk in the room, girls go, wow, what is that? <laughs> You didn't have to laugh that loud, all right? But because I didn't like who I was, that was my excuse for not doing what I knew was right. Believe it or not, I'm not one of those speakers who came in today to tell you what to do or not to do. That's not who I am. I'm here to say, do what you believe is right. I think it's written on your heart. Why didn't I help them? I didn't like who I was. See, I want to be like another friend of mine, Ronnie. See, Ronnie, Ronnie was good looking. If Ronnie walked in this room, girls would go, Hey, Ronnie. <laughs> I walked in the room, girls go, hey, Bob. <laughs> but Ronnie was good looking. He was five foot ten, dark hair, dark skin, and he was built. That's some of my resume. I never got one job because of my looks. But not only was Ronnie good looking, he was athletic. He could take two steps, do a flip. I could take a hundred steps, and I can't do a flip. <laughs> I can roll a little bit. <laughs> Ronnie got the high dive down at the pool. He did whatever he wanted to with his body. I got the high dive, the water did <laughs> whatever it wants to my body. So he's good looking, he's athletic, plus, he's one of those guys I had a hard time with in school, teachers. You may not believe this by listening to me, but I did really good in school. Except for grades. <laughs> but see, Great grades are important. Learn it now, okay? Um, those who are still like seventh, eighth grade, learn it now. Here's why. When you get, I, I think this is true in South Dakota as well. When you get your driver's license, if you have a uh, B or better, you get your insurance as well. Is that true here? Yeah. 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 So my, my dad said to me, Bob, you don't get a B, you don't get insurance. You don't get insurance, you don't get the car. So I looked at my dad with respect. Because he's my dad. And I said, buy my own insurance. <laughs> Don't say that to your dad. <laughs> All right? He said, you didn't hear me. No B, no. No insurance, no insurance, no car. car. Buy my own car. <laughs> He's like, are you deaf? No B, no insurance, no insurance, no. Ah. So one semester I gave it 110%. I took books home. I studied and studied all. There's an idea. <laughs> but when I gave it 110%, and teachers, you know this is true of some students, my best, when I gave it 110%, I just made a B. <clears throat> Minus. <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes I go to bed at night and I just scream at the sky and go, it's not fair. Do you ever feel that? It's not fair. He's good looking. He's athletic. He's intelligent. Plus, his parents had money. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, money. <laughs> I thought if I had one of those four things, I could feel good about myself and help him down from the fence. But please hear me today. You wait to have everything society says before you do what's right. We'll never have a dignity revolution. You'll never live life to the fullest. But you know what else you have to know this afternoon? Even if you're one of those lucky ones, you have everything society, Hollywood says you need, doesn't guarantee you a good life. Without good choices, if 
found that out years ago coming up from a talk like this. I don't know if you've seen the van out, out back, but those guys are awesome. Our team is awesome. They got me home at 10.30 at night. But when I got there, my brother Bill was there. My brother Bill's six years older than I am. He didn't come over 10.30 at night to say hi to you. I knew something was wrong. I said, Bill, what's up? He said, Bob, it's Ronnie. It's my friend who could dive and do whatever he wanted to. Like, is he okay? And I'll never forget his words. He looked at me and said, Bob, Ronnie's dead. Please hear me. I've, I've been giving talks for longer than you've been alive, and I can't find a talk that'll take away all your problems. I can't find a talk that'll take away all the pain inside. And I can't find a talk that'll take away all the past. But you have to know this today. You don't have to let your problems, your pain, or your past take away your choices. You still have a choice. See, nothing got me ready for what he said next. He said, how did it happen? How did he die? He said, Bob, Ronnie went out and he got drunk. And he took his own life. They didn't show his body at the funeral. But because Ronnie called me his best friend, his parents asked if I'd go early to identify the body. Wickman's funeral home, just 30 minutes from Green Bay. Around his mom and dad on one side, and his girlfriend Natalie, and then we walked in, and then came Ronnie. Not with two steps to the foot, but a cold metal cart and a blue body bag. And they unzipped my, that bag, and there my friend lay. Never to laugh again, never to flip again. Never had a friend by his side during a hard time. Please hear me, every one of you will go through hard times. Don't do it by yourself. Have somebody there by But two things hit me really hard. Number one, if Ronnie couldn't live life to the fullest, what chance did Bob do? What, what chance did I have? Number two, why didn't he? He was good looking, athletic, intelligent. His parents had money. If he didn't have dignity, who could? Why didn't he? But I think I got the answer to that second one. His mom, I think, got a guilt. Start telling about Ronnie's childhood. Said when he was little, if he did anything wrong, she would hit him, not spank him or discipline him, hit him. <clears throat> Please hear me, no one ever, ever deserves to be hit, no matter what. She said he spilled the milk when he was three years old. Is that what kids do? Yeah. And she went to backhand him across the face. But at the tender age of three, he'd already been hit. So he put his elbow up to protect himself. In the back of her hand hit his elbow, and she said, I lost it. She started hitting and kicking and slugging her three-year-old child. Took him through against the wall. By the time she regained control from the anger, he was so black and blue and bloody they had to keep him in the house for a month so that nobody saw him report him to the police. He was treated like garbage, so guess what he thought he was? Just garbage. But when he was seven, there was a problem in the neighborhood and a police officer came over. Ronnie's two sisters were standing there. Police officer looked at the mom and said, are those your children? She said, those are my two girls. <laughs> I don't know who that animal belongs to. And she said, Ronnie just started to cry. If this is what she told me, can you imagine how bad it really was? But Ronnie never talked about what a family secret is. They just tell you to push it down and zip the lip and don't say anything until it explodes. Please hear me if you know anyone who's been abused in any way. Please give them the permission to tell somebody. Please give them permission. If you've been abused in any way, talk to somebody. A teacher, a coach, a counselor, a principal, pastor, somebody. Talk to somebody. Break the silence. But when he turned your age, he started to fight back. She said, I went to hit him. And she grabbed her arm and said, he grabbed her arm and said, Mom, that's enough. She, he said, but he came with the other arm. And she grabbed, he grabbed it and said, Mom, stop. She said, but Bob, it went so ballistic. She went down and she bit her son on the wrist. And it went down to his bone. And Ronnie had to get stitches because his own mom bit him. I wish that wasn't true. I wish it made up for a shock value. But it really happened. But I still can't okay what Ronnie did. Why not? This year alone, I'll speak to close to a half million students. Ron's not the only one that doesn't come from a perfect family. You come from a decent home, you still have mom or dad or a guardian that you know cares at all. Go home and say thanks. You guys, you still live with your dad? Go home, give him a hug, kiss him, and tell me love and thanks for being your dad. 
Oh, he'll freak out. He'll be like, hey, you asking for money again or what? <laughs> but if you have a teacher, a coach, a youth worker, some of you know cares, say thank you. But if you're here today and you really believe that nobody cares, man, I hope, and that's probably not true, but even if it was, even if nobody cares and you're all alone, I, I still want to prove that you still have value. Um, somebody got a $5 bill on you? Come on, price of corn up. Anybody? You got one? What'd you do to your arm? No, duh. How, how, how did you break it? Football. Football. All right. Good. I mean, not good, but. No, no, I just said no, duh. Somebody said, Bob, because sometimes they'll call this an anti bullying program, and said, Bob, won't you just be in a bully? No, can. Can I just say something? Can I tell you what bullying is and what it's not? Like, sometimes if you make a joke or, like, I'm the most sarcastic person I know, does that mean it's all, oh, don't you can't bully me? No. <laughs> like, if I hurt you for real, and my words actually hurt and said, hey, that hurt, would you not do it again? And then I continue it, that's bullying. What really is bullying, what's not? Anyways, okay, what's your name? Titus. Titus? Titus? I don't know if I've met a lot of Titus. <laughs> Tituses? <laughs> Titus, thank you very much. This just goes to prove one thing. You don't need to steal. Just ask. <laughs> just kidding, Titus. All right. This is Titus's $5 bill. How much is this worth? $5. Wow, good education here in South Dakota. That's <laughs> 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 But what if I took Titus's $5 bill and I verbally abused it? You good for nothing, $5 bill? I wish you'd never even printed. You'll never be as good as your older brother, the 10. How much is That was dumb. How much, how much is this worth now? $5. So you know it's been verbally abused and hasn't lost its value. But what if I physically abused it? What if I took it and said, take that, Lincoln. <laughs> Call that a beard? <laughs> Smile, you won the war. What? You lived in Illinois? Bears still suck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's not bullying. <laughs> All right. How much is this still worth? Five dollars. So even has been physically and verbally abused, it hasn't lost its value. value. What if I neglect it? What if the parents Oh, this $5 bill, get divorced. <coughs> Not funny. <laughs> Spends all its time at home, lonely and neglected. Not even PlayStation will play with it. <laughs> Nobody had Call of Duty. <laughs> How much is it worth now? $5. <laughs> so even though it's been abandoned and neglected, it hasn't lost its value. You get my point. Okay, now this next one's hard. Um, I hate to turn on the news nowadays. This it's just crazy. This nation is so divided. That, But you know what? I've been to 29 different countries, and with all the problems we have here, I still think you know, America is, is the greatest. I do. I love our country. I love it. So, so don't take this one the wrong way, and uh, maybe we don't have to record this one part. So, uh, but if I took this $5 bill and I... How much is it worth now? $5. You may not want to touch it. <laughs> but it hasn't lost its value. Okay. So no matter what, well, let me try one more. What if I... <laughs> what if I took Titus's... <laughs> and I just ripped it in half. Oh. Hey, 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 don't look at him. I'm giving the talk. They're like, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> no, watch. If you put it back together, it still hasn't lost its value. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Let me try it one more time. What if I ripped it? <laughs> it's got string in it. Cool. If I ripped it into four, <laughs> dollar and a quarter. <laughs> Tell you this, don't worry, that's advanced math. <laughs> okay, but watch. <laughs> Titus, you're tough, man. You broke your arm. No, duh. <laughs> what? But what if I. Ripped it and all. How much is still worth? All right. If Titus doesn't want this back, guess what I will not do with it? Don't Somebody say eat it. <laughs> but it's gluten free. 
<laughs> and it's organic. <laughs> no, I was looking for throw it away. Just, I went with little kids, I did this once, just to see if they'd get the concept. And I took it and I threw it in the garbage can. And I lost this one kid's attention, so the rest of the program kept staring at the garbage can. And he kept leaning closer and closer. Until when the bell rang, this little bit of his cheek was on the chair. As soon as the bell rang, he ran, jumped in the garbage can. Because he knew it hadn't lost its value. value. AJ keeps telling me, though, Bob, if you could restore that, oh, Bob. He's like, that would be the best. So I think here, you know, in this great land. <laughs> you do have great sunsets. <laughs> Here we go. Abra. Kadabra. <laughs> I got this. The By the power of a pheasant. <laughs> Focus. Focus. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Still broke his. <laughs> but if he doesn't want it, I'm not going to throw it away. Why? It hasn't lost its value. I did it once and I lost a chunk. And I lost the whole piece and I taped the rest back together, but a whole chunk was missing. And I brought it back to the bank and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but they gave it back. I'm brand new and they said this, don't miss this. As long as it had the identification number on it, it hadn't lost its value. Please hear me, you are so much more than a number. You're a human being and our constitution says there is liberty and justice for all. all. Not just the white, not just the man, not just the rich, not just the athletic, but for all. But here's what bugs me. I rip up a $5 bill and some of you freak out. You should. It's a five. <laughs> On a good day, it used to be able to buy a foot drum. <laughs> but you know what? When these same things happen to people, when people are bullied, or abused, or abandoned, or things are written on the internet, or you make mistakes, people think there's something wrong with them and they throw their lives away to drugs and alcohol and end up in a landfill of regret. Or worse yet, like my friend, who just threw his life away. If you get nothing else out of this talk, please don't miss this. No matter what people have done to you, no matter how they've hurt you, no matter what they've said about you, no matter how they've treated you, no matter what mistakes you've made yourself, you have not lost your value. Hey, I just <laughs> want to give this back to you. Um, thanks for being a good sport. You turn rather than I do. Um, <laughs> But you know what, I don't think somebody should tear up somebody's $5 bill, um, even for a good point, so here's a brand new $10 bill to give back. Oh. Give them a round of applause, right? Oh. And I were in Colorado, and somebody said, why did you give him a 10? And I'm like, because I really want to make the point, but it's never okay to hurt somebody else with their property, even. They looked at me, they're like, Rip up my 10. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they get it. So here's my, here's my talk today. We can have a dignity revolution. We can live life to the fullest by holding on to three core beliefs. Number one, no matter what has happened to you, just like this $5 bill, you have not lost your value. Number two is this, courage, courage. My friend Tom Dorn has this dog. He lets his dog out every day. One day he let it out and there was a rabbit in the yard. What's a dog do when it sees a rabbit? Chase it. Chase it. Arr, arr. Tom's like, it's going to be the dog's lunch. He's a father. The rabbit just sat there. It's going to be a quick lunch. Drive through. <laughs> he said, well, finally, the rabbit took off. But instead of running away from the dog, the rabbit ran straight towards the dog. He said, the dog freaked out. Dog never saw this before. All the dog ever saw is I bark, run, rabbit run, white tail, bite, crunch, ee. <laughs> this day the rabbit's coming towards the dog. The dog freaks out, puts on his brakes, turns around, and the rabbit starts chasing the dog around the yard. Finally, the dog puts his tail between his legs, went back on the porch, and scratched to get in. Tom's like, good watch, dog. He said, I looked outside, and there's something that rabbit acting tough. Well, my question for you this afternoon is this. How does a rabbit act tough? <laughs> that felt really dumb. 
He said, I had to find a donkey kid. He said, I had to find a hundred rabbit and too much courage. He said, what else? I went, ha! Rabbit just sat there swimming. Ha ha! Now I'm not going to try to get you to believe that that rabbit chased Tom. Because that didn't happen. <laughs> and all my stories are too, but can I tell you what really happened? He's trying to figure out why that rabbit won't run. And all of a sudden he saw why. Behind the rabbit were some bushes. And beneath those bushes were four little bunnies. <laughs> but why? Why didn't she have courage? To be an example to the little ones behind her, to stand up for the little ones behind her. Please hear me. To just be in here with the K through sixth grade. How many have a little brother or sister in the school? Let me tell you, they're watching you. They're watching you, not just when you're on a court or a stage or a diamond or a field or a track or a rink. They're watching you on Friday, Saturday night saying, what do you got to do to have fun here in South Dakota? They're watching you on the internet going, are you going to use it to connect and build people up? Or are you going to tear people down? They're watching how you go through your hard times because remember, all of us will. And do you bond together and make things better? Or do you become better and make things worse? Please, my wife and I have five kids. We have now 11 grandkids. <laughs> Seven and under. Christmas, no silent night. <laughs> it's crazy. But let me tell you this. I try to tell them they don't need bullying. They don't need vandalism. They don't need drugs, alcoholic gangs. But you know who they're always watching? Those who are older. Please hear me. Courage doesn't mean you don't have any fears. I have a ton of fears. But courage means you face your fears. Why? For a greater purpose. What is that purpose? Those little ones that are behind watching. Don't let anybody else make your choices for you. Have the courage to do what you know is right. So two core beliefs to live life to the fullest out of the daily revolution. Two core beliefs so far. Number one, no matter what has happened to you, just like that $5 bill, you have not lost your value. Number two, just like that rabbit, we need to have courage. courage. Number three is this, respect. Respect. Um, I get nervous every time I speak, and because of that, I always need to go to the restroom. I'm like, Bob, that's too much information. But I do, I, um, I actually, I, I know I'm kind of nervous today, so sometimes, you know, like we usually do middle school and then high school, but side of the school, we do them together here, so you're like trying to do both and make sure you're, you know what I mean? So I got a little nervous, so the first time I got to go in the, like the teacher's lounge area, they're nice. And they, how old is this school? It's really nice. So I, I'm sorry. I expected that. Like, I went to the restroom right down the hall here, right, to the left. It's really white. <laughs> right? I'm like, oh. <laughs> but just as proof that I went, you're like, Bob, why are you talking about bathrooms? Because disrespect so many times in schools starts in bathrooms. I went to one school. They tore the door off the stall. Xavier. By the way, I hate that. You talk about the act of privacy. Hello. <laughs> Leave it alone. And I don't understand, like, graffiti? Like, a guy sitting there doing his business. <laughs> guy sitting there doing his business, he goes, I feel tough. No, I feel really tough. I feel so tough, I'm right on the wall. About your mama. <laughs> oh, whoa. What do they think it's really cool to write what? Swear words. Mm. Woohoo! I started reading them. They spelt them wrong. <laughs> Four letter word. Ah. You have a beautiful school here, right? Take care of it. It does matter. Um, teachers, like, I don't care who's in power um, as far as political. I think that there's not one teacher here that can probably get paid doing something else and actually have more time off because of all the extra time they put in. And I think teachers need our respect and how about a round of applause right now. I don't uh, have a lot of time to talk about this, but my parents died way too young. Uh, my mom, and I'm sorry, but your pink shirt made me think of it. Because uh, this is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And my mom died of cancer. Way too young. And my dad, who was not overweight, died of a heart attack. 
And the only thing I regret is that some of my choices when I was your age didn't show my parents' respect or our family name. See, I was trying to find my independence and I thought I had to do it by pushing them away. You know what? Like I said, I've been to 29 countries. You know one thing I've learned from other countries? That the older people get, the more respect they get in other countries. Now, I'm not saying we don't need nursing homes, but I wonder if all we're doing is just push them aside. If you have a grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, or somebody in there, go and visit them. Not just to be nice to them, but we can learn from them the respect of our elders. But I, I think, I'm not a comedian, I'm a storyteller. I love comedians, except for when the biggest laughs they get is when they put down different groups of people. And technology is making the world smaller and smaller. But if you see even here in America, we're letting our differences what? Divide us more and more. I'm like, how are we ever gonna get to a respect that Gandhi hoped for? In a world where Gandhi lived for, where it says you're respected in your enemies? And I thought, you know what? Maybe it starts with self-respect. <laughs> Let me close with this story. When I was in the first grade, I had a speech impediment. I had to get marched out of the normal class to go to the special ed class because I couldn't pronounce my S's or my R's. It really was a wabbit. And, I, and that was hard enough to get marched out and teachers, thanks for trying, but just because you called it special ed, it made me feel special. <laughs> my name wasn't Ed. <laughs> When I got marched out, it was so hard, even for another reason for me, because my little brother Tim was totally handicapped. He had cerebral palsy and never took a full step by himself. He had braces on his legs. He had severe mental retardation, he never said a full sentence. So my little brother couldn't walk and he couldn't talk. Then when he turned your age, half his body started to grow and half it stopped. So half his body was bigger than the other side. And then scoliosis and curvature of the spine took his already crippled body, put him into a ball, and he couldn't even sit up in a wheelchair unless he had a special body brace made of plastic with Velcro straps to hold him in. And if that wasn't enough hardship for one person, he also had epilepsy, you know what that is? He'd have grand mal seizures where his whole body would stick out and shake, and he'd have to wipe the drool from his mouth. And almost every single day when I got marched out of that class, Somebody would always say, there goes Bob. He's returning just like his brother. And everybody would laugh. Remember the wrong philosophy, put others down, make yourself look better. And to be honest with you, sometimes I'd laugh too. There's a wife's proverb that said, even in laughter, the heart can be in pain. And so many nights, so I'd just cry myself to sleep. And don't get me wrong, I didn't come all the way to South Dakota for your pity. I hate pity. Because pity means somebody thinks that they're better than you. And they got their noses stuck up even though they're looking down on you. But so many nights I just cry myself to sleep and go, why can't they just accept us for who we are? Why can't they just respect us for what we have? Do you think I wanted a speech impediment? And as much as I love my brother, I think I want to be handicapped. But the hardest choice you'll ever make is after you've been disrespected, will you lower yourself to their level? or you rise above it. Dr. Martin Luther King said, darkness cannot cast out darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot cast out hate. Only love can do that. But it's hard, even in my own little situation. I had to take my brother Tim for walks in his wheelchair. But I knew people would stare and point and laugh because he was different. So you know what I did? I pushed him on certain blocks where nobody had seen me. My own brother, my own flesh and blood, I was embarrassed of. But that's one of the reasons I'm here today. I wish Tim could be here. And he'd be in his wheelchair and he'd probably interrupt this program. And he'd probably have to wipe the drool from his mouth. But I wish he was here and I could say, this is my brother Tim, and I love him. This is my brother Tim and I'm proud of him. This is my brother Tim and he's a person too. And because of that, he deserves respect just like anybody else. If you agree with that statement, you give that statement a round of applause right now. But I, can't, I can't do that. Because my brother Tim has passed away. But that's why I do what I do. 
People say, Bob, five kids, 11 grandkids, why are you gone away from home so much? And I'm like, the money is awesome. <laughs> no, I don't get, I'm a part of a nonprofit, I don't get paid anymore. We were here two, year, two weeks ago and we were trying to consolidate to, to cut down the cost because it costs a lot to bring this all in. So we'll probably not even make any money on this tour, on this trip. And people say that, Bob, why? Here's why. If my brother Tim deserves respect, then guess what? So does every other person that's sitting in this room. No matter how different they are from you, no matter how much you disagree. Did you know you can even dislike somebody and treat them with respect? Would somebody tell the politicians? Because it'd be a whole different world today. I was gonna stop there, but let me show one more story. I was in Indiana speaking at a school that was a little bigger than you, just the high school was about 2,000 students. A little bigger. <laughs> and the principal asked if I'd talk to a freshman young man. I said, sure, why? He said, he just came back from the hospital. I said, for what? He said, for a suicide attempt. I'm like, oh, I'll talk to him to hear his story. Here's what it was. He said, Bob, my family and I moved here from Pakistan six months ago, legally, if anybody's checking. And he said, but we moved here because of persecution and for asylum. And because of the color of my skin, some people thought it'd be funny to call me terrorist. And people have spit on me, they've hit me, and groups of guys have jumped and beat me. And they put untrue things on the internet about me. Tears coming down this young man's face. He said, Bob, why? I would never hurt anybody. I would never, I love this country. Teachers, I felt stuck. Because if I said the reason he attempted suicide was because of the bully, you know what we did then? We gave the bully even more power. We can't let the bully win. So I looked at him and I said, hey, in, in, the, in the book, Dignity Revolution, that I just wrote, that we're gonna leave this one here with the school, I said, in there, it talks about how to report it. That's not being a wimp. That's being the most loving thing you can do, is report it. But then I went and I grabbed that $5 bill that I ripped up, and I gave it back to him. And I said, remember this, no matter what they have done to you, they can't take away your value. Their value. If I, somebody gave me a ripped up five, I'd tape it together and spend it on a sub. He instead taped it together and put it in a plaque and said, no matter what, you haven't lost your value. value. And I looked at him and I said, it's going to take a lot of courage. Because you want to do what? Either run and hide, hurt yourself, or you want to fight back. He fights back, gets the kids in trouble. He does. And I said, I know it's hard, but everybody deserves respect. Let me tell you this. If he was the only person I've ever changed, it'd be worth all the travel and all the work. Because that's where the dignity revolution starts when one person knows that they're worthwhile. So if you would, would you go through this one more time with me? And I'm going to ask you to do something today. <laughs> I don't know your policy in school about cell phones and when you can get online. But I'm, a I'm asking you to go online today. Go to dignitypledge.com. And would you take the pledge to stand up for the value of every person, no matter what? And if you want to tell us your story, it's confidential, you can, you can send it there, but go and take the pledge. But would you go through this one more time with me? You can live life to the fullest. You can have a dignity revolution by holding on to three core beliefs. Number one, no matter what is happening, just like that $5 bill, you have not lost your value. Number two, just like that rabbit, you need to have courage. And do what you know is right. Number three, my handicapped brother Tim and everybody else, no matter the color of your skin, gender, doesn't matter. Everybody deserves Respect. The word value starts with what? Me. The word courage starts with what? Me. The word respect starts with what? R. And if you put it together, you get a... VCR. <laughs> <laughs> and that's old school. <laughs> How many still have a VCR in your house? <laughs> South Dakota. <laughs> Some things should go extinct, like VCRs, like hatred, white supremacy, abuse. Some things should last forever. The value of every person, no matter. The courage to do what you know is right, no matter what everybody else is doing. The respect for yourself and for others. Hey, grab a ticket on the way out. We'd love to see you here tonight at 
And there's free. And AJ will have a completely different show tonight. So come back tonight um, on behalf of our team. You guys rock, South Dakota rocks. Thank you very, very much. If you guys like Bob, you can come back and see Bob tonight. Um, we really appreciate Bob being here. Hopefully you took something out of it. Um, but I know we don't want you to miss any more school. You guys don't want to miss any more school, do you? So we'll, uh, we'll load back on the same buses and head back to school here. Just in time for what hour? Eighth hour?